Hello, thank you for clicking on this video. So whilst you're watching me now, I am actually waiting for a parcel that might arrive in the next 10 or 15 minutes. And it's very, very exciting antique eyewear. And if you want to know why it's so exciting, stay tuned to find out. Priest and Ashmore was a manufacturing optician that was founded in 1832 and had remained the family business for more than a century. They manufactured spectacles, monocles, pince-nez and glass eyes for the domestic market as well as scientific optical equipment like microscopes and magnifying lenses. It was an opulent premises with mahogany clad showrooms that featured on the Sheffield Directory for many years. But soon it would meet an unfortunate end. It's 1940. Britain and Germany have been at war for nearly a year and three months. A war that would take the lives of approximately 75 million people worldwide. Killing an average of 27,000 people every day for six years. Thursday, the 12th of December 1940, 7.41pm. Sheffield was blitzed by a Luftwaffe air raid that dropped 16 high explosive bombs and just over 11,000 incendiary bombs onto the city below, causing unprecedented destruction. Most bombs fell onto the city centre, with the last bombs dropping at 4 a.m. Unfortunately for the people of Sheffield, the city would be raided again just three days later on the 15th of December, where another 11,000 and more incendiary bombs would be dropped onto the city. Over 660 people were killed in the raid, with another 1,500 injured. More than 40,000 people were made homeless due to the 78,000 destroyed buildings and homes. Unfortunately for Priest and Ashmore, their manufacturing opticians, who had been trading for 108 years, was one of the buildings hit. After the raid, the Priest family salvaged as many items from the ruins as they could. There was little more they could do. Since then, those salvaged items, spectacles, pince-nez, glass eyes, and even monocles had been hidden away in a loft, in a suitcase, perfectly preserved, until they were recently rediscovered by the great-great-grandson of Edwin Priest. Okay, so that's the history of the opticians that was bombed um, in 1940, unfortunately. It's really hot in Japan, by the way, so please excuse the lack of usual uh, Edwardian layers. So you may be wondering how um, these things came to me. So I saw the listing on, a, on an auction site of a new old stock monocle. I asked the seller, how do you know it's new old stock? New old stock means it's never been used before. It's, it's new stock into a shop, but it's really old. It would have been new in the opticians when it was made and it stayed like that. It was never used. I was like, how do you know that? You can't possibly know the whole history of this item. And that's when he told me the great story that it was his great grandfather's opticians that had been bombed and I guess you know these styles weren't that popular in the 1940s there certainly were still people wearing the styles that I'm about to show you but they're more Edwardian Victorian styles they did last for quite a long time though so it's possible that the opticians just had all these old old frames still in stock or perhaps it was just archives things that had never sold over the years anyway I was so thrilled to find this out that I asked more and I was like well do you, what else did you find? And he started sending me uh, photographs of his wonderful collection that he said he would allow me to use in this video. And he kind of got that I was really interested in the history and that I was a collector and I wanted to uh, you know, display them and preserve them. And because it was like his family history, I guess he was really on board with that because he did a really nice thing for me. I asked him if he could kind of make me a small set that's like a, a representation of the types of things that the optician sold. And he obviously got that, I was really interested in it and that I wanted to preserve it. And so he did that for me and that is what I'm currently waiting for. I have to be honest, um, it's actually a lot later in the day than it was when I first started filming this video. Okay, here we are. White gloves on because we don't know what we will be dealing with here. Let's have a look. This is so that I don't smudge the glass and the metal. Okay, so first out is this 
and let's have a look first. This is an eyeglass case, say a leather eyeglass case, um, probably what um, once you bought the spectacles is probably what they would give you. Maybe they would sell it, maybe it would be for free. We're unsure. And there's something inside, which is always good news. So it's a small little package. So we will delicately open this up and have a look inside. But first, let's have a look inside this uh, antique glasses case. You can see it's kind of very similar to a modern glasses case. So the glasses would sit in here, they would be held in by the small ridge, and the lid kind of closes like that. So let's take a look at what's inside this small package here. Aha, I know exactly what this is. This, I think, is an ear hook. Okay. There we go. Look at this little beautiful thing. Okay. So this is going to be kind of hard to show. But this is essentially a hook. So this hook goes around your ear and then this chain attaches to your glasses, your pince nez, your monocle, and it holds it to your face. So it's a little bit more efficient than this string. So the guy who sent this to me, he said that he would send me one for display and he'd also send me one that I could hopefully use for my monocle. So I'm very excited about this. Okay. Oh. Okay, so this, you can see this is a small um, cardboard advertising box and potentially when you bought glasses again, you might pick them up in this cardboard box. Let's kind of delicately open this. So it appears to just open from the top, okay, like that. And then inside, we have some glasses here. Okay, let's have a look. Okay. So the first is um, some pince nez. There we are, look at that. A wonderful, beautiful golden pince nez. Okay, I'm just gonna place that there. It still feels a bit heavy, so I think there's something else in there. But here is the pince nez. And as you can see, there it is, the pince nez. Beautiful sea bridge here. This is a sea bridge type. You can see very strong prescription there. Can't see anything through it. And of course here is the ear hook. There it is, okay. So this one also comes with an ear hook. Beautiful pince nez, love it very much. Very beautiful sea bridge type of pince nez. This is very exciting indeed. The ear hooks appear to be uh, the same. One of them is much thinner than the other, however, so. I assume the one that is not attached to anything is the one he said that he would um, he would send for me to use with my monocle. So I'm very excited about that. And now what I'm going to do is peel away this uh, I don't know what this is foam, and there they are, the spectacles. Oh my goodness, beautiful spectacles here. I have to be very careful with the cardboard because it's very old. But look at these spectacles, there they are. Incredibly beautiful spectacles. Um, okay, so these have a wire temple, which means that they wrap around the ear as well. So let me try and open these up delicately. There we are. So these are in incredible condition for glasses that were stored for a very long time and then bombed. They're in amazing condition. Okay, let's wipe the lenses a little bit clean here. Luckily I'm wearing cotton gloves. The lenses on these are huge. I don't know if you can see this, but these are very thick lenses indeed. They uh, they far outreach the, the frame. And you can see these wire, I hope you can see these wire frames. We'll have a few close-ups afterwards, but you can see these wire temples and they essentially wrap around the back of the ear. So I would really like to show you how these objects work. So if I'm brave enough, I will show you how you actually would wear some uh, some of these objects. Okay, sorry if the shots kind of changed, the battery ran out, so now we've recharged and we're having another look. So obviously here were the glasses, that are, the spectacles I was just talking about. You can see they have a very, very strong prescription indeed. I can't see anything out of them. 
Wow, what a great collection of um, almost unused, pristine condition. These ones have prescription lenses, so this tells me that these, the pince-nez and the glasses were definitely used. Probably they were in the um, optometrists, they were in the optician shop, probably to have the lens, lenses changed or some minor work done on them. So these probably would have been used by a customer, but again, they're practically brand new. Wow, what wonderful, wonderful, beautiful items. Nose pad still intact. Uh, Metalwork still intact. The gold, the gold plating. These items are all gold plated or old gold. It's hard to tell um, at this stage, but wow, it's so rare to find them, um, you know, perfect in this condition. Normally, these things are worn, they're worn through, worn again and again and again, and eventually the plating or, you know, the gold starts to wear away and you can see the plating underneath. These ones, of course, um, bombed in the 1940s. They were taken away, they were salvaged by the family and kept in storage for so long that the plating is absolutely beautiful and they are just magnificent pieces to look at. The lenses are so clear, literally they could have been replaced yesterday that's how beautiful they are honestly and I hope I can reflect this in the video there's one last thing in here and I know exactly what it is okay obviously this box isn't antique this is just what it was sent in so I can discard that now in here if I'm correct is an NOS that's new old stock never before used monocle now this monocle has no lens it has never been unscrewed. It's never been, um, it's never had a lens put in. It's never even been worn. This monocle has never been used before. And that is absolutely incredible. So obviously as a monocle wearer, this excites me to no end. So I will very gently cut this sellotape. Okay, that should have done it. Let's see what we've got here. Oh, yes. Oh my goodness, look at this, perfect. So shiny. Even through this kind of uh, plastic wrapping, this foam wrapping, I can still see how shiny this monocle is. Oh my goodness, okay, let's have a look. Oh, I wanna open it. Um, oh my God. So shiny, so beautiful. Now normally when monocles get used, and sometimes it happens on my monocle too, is what you get is you get black, you get kind of a black dirt around the uh, the soldering, where, the, where it's been soldered together. And this just gathers from oxidization, it gathers from, from dirt on your skin. This monocle has absolutely zero sign of that. My goodness. Absolutely pristine monocle. This monocle here, as you can see, careful not to crush the things below me. This monocle has never before been worn by any human being. It's never been used, never had a lens put in. And consequently the gold plating and looking for hallmarks. I believe it is gold plated and not filled. Usually if it's filled, it has hallmarks plated. Not so often. There you go, look at that. Absolutely beautiful. You can see where the gallery is sold to the frame. There is no blackening. It's just pure, beautiful gold color. Wow, what a sensational piece. I am so thrilled. This is absolutely beautiful. And to think that these things spent so long um, in, a, in an attic, in a case, um, untouched, undisturbed, unused, you know, just waiting for the right time to be used. These have just come to me, but you could say, you know, they were waiting to come to me. That's how I feel right now. I feel like these were things that were literally just waiting for me. And here they are with me now. And I'm kind of the first one who gets to look at these and touch these you know feel these and get a feeling for them i think i'm going to leave this paper inside this cardboard box because i feel like it keeps it safe you know to feel these items to hold these items to experience these items 
other than the uh, the family who obviously owned, or whose ancestors owned the shop. And here we are. Here, here in all of their glory are these wonderful, uh, beautiful pieces of eyewear. And yes, you know, it's very easy to go online and buy pince-nez, to buy monocles, and to buy spectacles, and of course to buy antique spectacle cases, you can get them for nothing, really, literally peanuts. But to have sp uh, spectacles, pince-nez, monocles, and boxes from one optician, this is all from the same opticians from the same company, is really very rare. To have them all in one set is even rarer. To have them in mint condition, exactly like how they were the day you know they were finished the day they were found is incredible especially considering that these things survived a bombing you know the whole the optician shop was bombed it was destroyed so much so that obviously the family couldn't sell these objects they couldn't use these they couldn't even give them back to the customers this has somebody's prescription somebody was waiting for these glasses you know, 80 years ago, somebody was waiting for these glasses to come back to them with their prescription in them. And clearly they never did. These glasses are unscratched, unscathed, and I just have to thank, um, you know, allowed me to have these so much for giving me such beautiful pieces of history, such wonderful artifacts such beautifully preserved things. Honestly, it may seem silly to some people, but it just means so much to have these. These, these are amazing. This one appears to be about 39 millimeters, 39 millimeters for the monocle. The lenses on the glasses, 30 millimeters by about 38 millimeters. Pince-nez, 29 millimeters by 37 millimeters. The length of these chains are about 10 centimeters so the back one is 10 centimeters and this one is about uh, 11 centimeters very interesting indeed i really kind of want to show you how these things work so i've been wearing a monocle the whole time so you can see how the monocle works now if i dare um this is how the pince works so you can see the nose pads are on the inside here so nose pads sticking inwards i simply open up the sea bridge I attach them to my nose like this. It's a very precarious little pinch. And then this little ear hook goes around my ear, just sat like that. And you can see the chain here. And then that will mean that if the uh, pince nez were to fall off my face, they would be gripped by the chain. That's how that works. <laughs> it does mean that you can't really hang them from your neck and put them in your pocket, but it does mean that it looks a little bit more pleasant and you don't have chains hanging around your neck. And with the spectacles, so you can see these um, wire temples, essentially these also, as I showed in my monocle video, they wrap around the ear like this, and again, would sit on the face like this, and these ear hooks would stop them from falling off. Now, obviously, if you are dealing with items of provenance of particular historical value in a museum, it's not recommended that you try them on. However, these items are entering my personal collection. So they are owned by me and I intend to display them and preserve them and love them. Um, but, you know, I buy these items to educate myself. And so in doing that, the reason I made this entire YouTube channel was so that I could hopefully um, share what I've learned and the items that I have, and that's why I tried them on for the benefit of the viewers who may, might be interested. But of course, um, these are going to go in a nice display case, and I'm going to keep them forever. I just think this is beautiful. We've got these wonderfully preserved pince nez. The gold, is, the gold plating is beautiful. The lenses are beautiful. The nose pads are beautiful. Um, the glasses, of course, are also pristine, and of course, the monocle here is absolutely pristine and beautiful and has never been worn of course to have the leather glasses case that these spectacles would have came in the pince nez would have come in and of course this cardboard advertising box as well it's just such a nice collection to know that all of these things came from the same place from the same opticians um 
that was unfortunately bombed and to actually you know have had contact with the owner who is an ancestor of the people who owned this stuff um it's absolutely thrilling and hopefully soon i can make a video about making a display box for these pieces but uh, that's probably all i can say about them now thank you for joining me on this kind of reactionary i feel like i didn't react overreact too much i was just very impressed and kind of um, awestruck by the beauty of these pieces of course like i said you can go on ebay and you, you can buy spectacles and pince nez very cheaply but to own such a piece of history that was bombed and preserved that's rare and these things you know they have not been used since they went to that shop so they are very new old stock and that is incredible thank you so much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it um, I'm really in love with these pieces and I'm so proud to own them. Um, thank you. Consider subscribing if you like this kind of content, if you love antiques. I know this video is a bit boring, kind of one shot, but it was all about the objects this time, not about the scenery. Um, so thank you very much for watching and um, end of video. Done!